Now, back in 1954, the BBC made a 30-minute film giving television audiences a snapshot of life in the southwest. The film, called A Brief Journey, followed a Royal Navy sailor during a weekend of shore leave. Well, 64 years later, we've set out to recreate his journey, to see how much has changed. Last night, you may remember, we saw the sailor about to catch a train from Plymouth to begin the next leg of his journey. This is the toy junction where one changes onto the single line Princetown train. Back in 1954, it was possible to take the train out onto Dartmoor. A line which promises a new country. A view from new heights, perhaps, a view across the soft South Devon hills to the distant channel, or a climb among rocky crags, or even a mirror of water, Ballot or reservoir. The film followed the sailor as he made his way to visit a farming family at Merivale. His rail journey took him through some spectacular scenery on the line between Yelverton and Princetown. Over the tussocky, untenanted country, over the road bridge toward weather-worn tors and heather and rock and the wind-blown patches of cotton grass. There were little halts along the line with names which evoked the isolated and mysterious nature of the moor. Seldom passengers get out here. Perhaps they're put off by its old notice board. Beware of adders. The traveller coming here, never having been here before, might well wonder whether he'd been rightly directed to leave the train at this deserted platform at the end of nowhere. Well, more than 60 years later, our sailor would certainly recognise the landscape. That's barely changed. Everything else has, though. This is all that's left of King Tor Holt, and the railway line has long since vanished. In fact, it closed just two years after the film was made. He did the next bit of the journey, though, on foot, so I can now literally follow in his footsteps. This was a major quarrying area with a thriving community of hundreds now in ruins. In the sailors' time, the buildings were still recognisable as the homes they'd once been. The sailors' next stop was Merivale Farm, where an auction was underway. Mr Ellicott has sold his farm where he and his wife brought up their nine children. It was Elon Ellicott's parents who were selling up. Look at these lovely sheep, Russell. I met Elon at the former family home, along with Russell Woolcock, who worked for the auctioneers. Well, everybody turns up to the farm sale, doesn't they? That's right. Whether they're interested in buying anything or not. And what are your memories of that day, of the auction day? I know we got up early in the morning. Mother got us all out of bed and we were going early in the morning. It was real busy. And we were going all day long, I remember it. Yeah, we, none of us had no spare time. As you see on the film, brothers driving the cattle around in the ring. Father had all us children running around, doing little jobs. After the auction, everyone retired indoors for a good feed and a sing-song. When the wind whistles cold on the moor of the night. Oh. It didn't have a lot of teeth in the day, did him? Oh. <laughs> Father couldn't sing anyway. That sailor's <laughs> after my <laughs> sister, isn't he? <laughs> I did wonder that. <laughs> He's always around her, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. The morning is dull, misty in patches. There's me, looking out the window. I was stood here, looking out. My youngest sister was this side, and my next sister was stood there. And I wave you goodbye. Oh. And off he went, and he was heading off for Lou in Cornwall, which is where we will pick him up on the next part of his journey tomorrow.